Hey, Stuffy, you busy, baby? Not really, just sort of on Steve duty. Man, he's like 30 or something, and he still sleeps with stuffed animals. Ain't that kind of infantile or whatever? I never really thought about it. And he's 33. What's up? I need some advice, baby. What about? Last night I had this dream that's been fucking with me all day. I was hoping you could help me figure out what it means, baby. Well, I'm no psychologist, but if you tell me about it, I can tell you what I think, I suppose. Cool, baby. So, it started out where I was in this alley, right? And I was being stabbed in the guts by this little bear who had kind of a shitty Irish accent when he talked. And Jack McPherson. I don't know who it was. I couldn't see him. It was too dark. Yes, but surely it couldn't have... Don't interrupt, baby. Sorry. Anyway, he quit stabbing me, and I look down, and I'm bleeding, and I've got, like, guts and shit falling out of me. And I look at him, and I say, what did you do to me, baby? And he says, what are you so worried about? You're not even real. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then he put the knife down and gave me a hand job. That's an interesting turn. Yeah, and the weirdest part was, when I woke up from the dream, Jack McPherson was there giving me a hand job. I see. So what do you think it means, baby? You know, Toby Benson, it might not mean anything. Nobody's really sure what dreams mean. There are all sorts of neurological and psychological theories. Dreams are generated by random combinations of memories. Dreams are the brain's way of sorting through difficult emotions or dealing with disturbing experiences. Nobody really knows for sure. Yeah, but what do you think about it, baby? Why do you care about my opinion? It was your dream. I'm no more of an expert on the subject than you are. I know, baby. I was just wondering. You don't think it means I'm gay, do you? Would that bother you? No, I guess not. I don't think concepts like heterosexuality or homosexuality really apply to you. You don't? I've always thought of you as a voracious, morally untroubled omnisexual. You have, baby? Well, not always. Not ever, actually, until just now. You ever have a dream to fucked with you, baby? I've had dreams that were troubling to various degrees. Tell me about one. Oh, no, I don't like talking about my dreams. Come on, baby, I want to hear about it. Well, once I dreamed that this incredibly wealthy woman came to see me at the Mid-Atlantic Food Bank and offered to make an enormous donation if I would kill her former lover who abandoned her decades before. Did you kill her, baby? Yes, I did. Smart move. In the consequence-free world of a dream, I suppose it was. Also very similar to a play by Friedrich Dürrenmatt. What you think it means, baby? It might mean that I want to read that play. Or maybe it means... <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, sorry. I was just... Just having this really heavy dream. Tell us about it, baby. No, uh, I hate talking to other people about my dreams. It's okay. We've already been talking about dreams anyway. Yeah, lay it on us, baby. All right. Well, um... I had this, uh, I had this time machine, and I traveled back in time to ancient Rome, and when I got there, I decided that I had to stop the assassination of Julius Caesar. So, I went to Brutus's house, and I knocked him out, and I took his toga and put it on, and in the dream, um... Ancient Rome was like uh, Krypton in the first Christopher Reeve Superman movie where everybody's toga had like their own special symbol on their chest and when I had his toga on everybody thought that I was Brutus so I went to the Senate and I gathered all the senators around and I said hey everybody I know that we were planning on doing that assassination thing with Julius Caesar today but forget it we're not doing that and they were all like cool you know we weren't really into the whole murdering our head of state anyway and they just kind of go off and do whatever they were going to do that day you know and I'm walking back to my time machine from the senate and on the way there I pass Julius Caesar like he's coming the other way and and he recognizes me. He knows that I'm not really Brutus. And he says, hey, 
I know what you did for me in there just now, and I just wanted to say thank you. And I said, well, you know, you're welcome. And I went back to my time machine, and I returned to the present. That doesn't sound like such a horrible dream. Well, I'm not done yet. Why are you always interrupting, baby? Sorry. So anyway, I get in my time machine, and I come back to the present, and I, I get out, and everything's fine. You know, everything's normal, just the way it should be. And I, I, for a second, I think, oh, this is, this is great. You know, I didn't, uh, I, I changed history, and I didn't fuck up uh, the present. And then this guy comes up to me, and he says, hey, uh, since you changed the past, uh, you and Ashley aren't together anymore. You know, she's not your wife anymore. And I'm like, well, that sucks. So I, I run back to my time machine to, to go back again and kill Julius Caesar and, and put everything back right. But when I get to my time machine, it's got one of those, uh, like, things on one of the tires, like, like they put on uh, Homer Simpson's car in that episode that they don't show anymore because of 9-11. You mean a Denver boot, baby? Yeah, a Denver boot. It's got a Denver boot on it. So I can't take my time machine back in time to go, you know, fix everything. So I'm stuck in this new version of the present where uh, Ashley's not my wife anymore and there's nothing I can do about it. And then I woke up. Okay, now that sounds like a pretty bad dream. Yeah, your life would suck without Ashley, baby. I know. What other woman would have you? I don't know. Wait, what? Without her, you'd be all alone for the rest of your life, baby. Long fingernails, pissing in jars, all that shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, Stuffy, do you hear this? Yes. Well, what do you think? Oh, what I think isn't important. Do you think that without Ashley, I'd be all alone forever? That I would never find another woman to put up with me? Ashley has been very patient. Okay, I know that I'm not always the easiest person to live with, and Ashley's a great girl, but, I mean, come on, what about me? Without me, she'd be just as lonely as I would be without her. No, she'd I don't think so, baby. find somebody. Yeah, she'd find somebody. What if she wound up with some hipster doofus? You know, the kind of guy who not only owns a cardigan, but wears it out of the house. That doesn't really sound like Ashley's type. No, she'd probably hook a real prize once she got clear of you, baby. It's like she's sitting on a catapult, and you're the rope that's holding her down. And when she finally cuts that rope, the sky's the limit, baby. The hell it is. You just woke up. What are you doing? I'm going back in. I'm going to get that Denver boot off my time machine, return to the past, and set things right. Nobody wake me until Julius Caesar is dead. Wake up. What? Julius Caesar is dead. Just a little joke. I thought it was funny. Thank you. You know what else might be funny, baby? I'm not giving him a hand job. <laughs>